In this video, you are going to learn the two most useful editing apps for Android and iPhone in 2020. Welcome to Underwater, the go-to channel to make creators one click at a time. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and activate that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Also, at the end of this video, you'll see a 57 second short I edited using one of the apps I featured on this video. So let's see if you can guess which app did I use. It's not a secret for anyone that the marketplace is overwhelmed with editing apps that range between high-end, very sophisticated and complicated to simple, meaningless or totally useless. Making your choice more difficult than what it should be. My editing app list for Android and iPhone comes down to this. Power Director and KineMaster. Power Director has multiple features that let you edit your video in 4K quality with a multiple timeline interface and share them directly onto YouTube. You don't need multiple apps to cut, edit, and rotate your footage. PowerDirector lets you edit full HD and 4K videos from start to finish, including effects, transitions, and music. This is how it works. So this is basically how PowerDirector works. In here we have the main screen which is giving you the option to use one of the videos that you produced already of a new project. So let's see a new project right away. It's going to take you to the screen where it's going to allow you to select the ratio in which you want to edit your project. You have your 16.9, 9.16 and 1.1. One, one. one important thing to remember is when you select one of these three ratios that, that they're giving you, you are not going to be able to change it. You're going to have to do the whole project again or export your project and bring it back into PowerDirector and then select again the ratio that you want to use. For this try, we're going to use 16.9. We're not going to name the project. We're going to take a, a little clip. As you can see, it shows you right away the clips that you have in 4K and the ones that are not. So let's select uh, this one that is uh, 42 seconds. You hit the plus button in the middle. All right. So in the left hand corner, as you can see, once you select the clip that you're working on your timeline, which is this one, it's going to give you a different menu. It's going to give you the option of deleting the video or editing the video. Once you hit that pencil that you see on the, on the left side, it brings out this whole new menu where you have your volume, your speed control, pan and zoom to crop your video, rotate, and so many more. So you can see that there, you can use it whatever, uh, however you want. So now, this is why I put so much emphasis on most useful over the best. The reason why I do this is because you might find some tools that you can use for the type of content that you upload to YouTube that other application will not allow you to. What do I mean by this? For example, when I select the clip that we put on the timeline right here to give you, well, this one is already selected. So let's select this one, right? So if I want to uh, cut this uh, part of the video on the timeline, I use this tool here, right? I clip it but it doesn't give me the option if I wanted to cut to the left or to the right of the clip like you're going to see as you're going to see on KineMaster. So it cut it, it usually cut it to the right. You can select it and get rid of it like this. It's fine. If you want to go back, you, uh, you hit the button on the uh, right hand side, undo and it will bring it back. It does not have, it doesn't have a redo button. So you can only uh, undo whatever you did already, but it doesn't send you forward, only send you backwards. So if I get rid of this, I can bring it back by doing the undo. The one that I did, the one that I cut before that, I cannot bring it back again. Also on the left hand side, you have your uh, library of music and uh, special effects. From here, you can select the music that you want to put on that clip. You can use any of the music that they already have in here or you can download, if you uh, look at the button on the upper left corner, it gives you uh, music and clip that you can download, download from the cloud. So in here you have another selection of music that you can use. As you can see, it is not a, a, a huge amount of uh, uh, music that you have, but you have some music. Also, you have sound clip in here that you can use as a special effect for your video, which is very useful, depending on the type of uh, content that you're uploading uh, to YouTube. All right, so we go back again. The one behind that, underneath that, is the layers. So if you want to add another set of uh, uh, layers to the 
the project that you're doing already, you go to uh, image or video, whatever you want to add. So let's go to video and let's use another one of this, the same one. All right, so we added the same uh, part of the video clip, just as, so, so I can show it to you, as a layer, which is on the bottom, which is this one that you see over here. So we go back again. All right, so we're on the main screen, and now we have our layer here. Let's go back. On top of the, the one, which is the main one, which is this one. So now you can uh, turn it around, and if you're familiar with any of this application, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And here you make it bigger, and you position it uh, any way you want it. And directly at the bottom of that is the effects. So in here you have a, a, a great selection of, uh, of special effects that you can use on your clip. Most of this that, that you see over here, you can use it directly over the clip or as a transition effect. You can also go to the cloud again and grab one of the ones that they have here that are pretty much similar to the ones that you already have. PowerDirector is not known for having a great uh, variety of uh, special effects for on clip uh, effect, but uh, remember you editing on an app on your phone. Again, the reason why I'm making this video is to establish the difference between useful versus the best. This is another example. If you hit the little square here, which is where we split our uh, frames, so you hit here, it'll go it's going to take you to the, uh, to the screen where you're going to select your uh, special effect for your video. These are the transitions uh, effect. Uh, let's just pick this one and let's see how this uh, effect works. So if you want to do that, you hit play in the middle of the effect and it will show you how the effect works. What is uh, the problem with that? It does not show you what the effects looks like on your video. For that, you have to get out and you need to physically add it to it and then you can play it and see what it's going to look like, right? So you're doing two things to do something that you can do directly on the application without the necessity to go out just to go back in, right? So if you want to get rid of that effect, you hit the uh, little square that you see here in, in the middle and you hit no transition. It'll take it away right away. But again, it's making you do things that take time from the whole project, which can... Uh, make the whole editing process even longer. And before we move on to KineMaster, let me know in the description box below if you are using any apps to edit your video or if you're planning on doing so. Before we move on to KineMaster, let me know in the description box below if you are using any apps to edit your video or if you're planning on doing so. Also, if you wanna get the most awesome thumbnails and a professional channel art for any of your social media platform, you need to visit snapat.com. I will leave you the link in the description box below to their website so you can try their massive library completely free. KineMaster supports unlimited text, image, handwriting, and over layers, as well as up to 10 video layers. Layer position and timing can be easily adjusted and layers can be animated using preset animation effects or with keyframe animation. This editing app includes many more features as well, such as void changer, filters, control of exporting frame rate, vibrate resolution, and support for a variety of video, audio, and file formats. Let's see how this editing app works. So this is basically how KineMaster works. When you open the application, it's going to take you to where you can have your project up to six projects at the same time, or you can add a new one. So uh, if you go to settings on KineMaster, it's going to take you where you have your information and all that. But the important part that I want to uh, uh, on the line over here, you want to go to uh, advanced and experimental settings and change the frame uh, rates from uh, 30 frame, uh, frame per second to 60 frame uh, per second. That's how you want to have it in your phone. So it's going to be the same frame rate per second that you have in, in your phone settings, which is the one, it, which is the way that I have it on my personal cell phone. So let's get uh, out of there. So in the middle, the middle button, you use it to add a new project to it. Once you hit that, it's going to give you the option to select the ratio in which you want to edit your video. So for this particular case, we're going to use 16.9. Again, once you uh, choose a ratio that you want to edit your video, you cannot change it. Not even during the project, not at the end. If you want to do that, you're going to have to do the whole thing again. So be mindful of uh, which platform you're going to be uploading your video to. So you select the right ratio for your project. 
In the right-hand corner, you use the media button to add any media that you want to edit to your project. And on the left-hand side, I have the uh, undo button and the redo button, which I don't have in Power Director. So I'll redo and it's right there. Then following, it has the, the, the capture and save uh, button. You can save a clip. You can capture and add it to the timeline. It's gonna be added as, as a layer or as a clip. And following that, you have a very cool feature in here, right? And here you can uh, use this setting to uh, set the audio and video and editing the way that you want your whole project to go along. So you have your audio at the beginning, then video, and then editing. For the most part, I keep it at 4.5 uh, seconds uh, duration for clip. Same thing for the duration of the layers that I use. So everything I keep it in uh, between 4.5 seconds and 3.5. That's the, usually the way that I have. All right, so we get out of there. And here you can amplify your timeline. You can, remember, you can put up to 10, up to 10 uh, layers, video layers on your project on KineMaster. So that's very useful for you. You can have 10. So now the main screen for your uh, project is going to be in the bottom. It's going to be smaller because uh, you're going to have up to 10 layers, only video. So if you're talking about audio, if you're talking about titles, so this screen over here is going to be full. Again, it depends if it's useful for you. If it's not, you don't need it. So you go back and in here it's going to send you all the way to the end of your uh, timeline. And if you hit it again, it's going to send you again back back to the beginning, all right? If you select the clip, now you have three different options on the left-hand side. You have the redo and, and the undo and redo button, you have the, the trash, and then you have this. In here, you can duplicate the, the video that you have in your timeline, and it's gonna duplicate it at the end of the timeline. So you're gonna have two of them. So there it is. This is where uh, it ends, and this is where the other one begins. And also you can have, and also you can duplicate it as a layer. So my recommendation to people when you do that, because sometimes you want to show something else and you want to put it on the side. So what I do is instead of lowering the volume on the layer, because you're not going to use it, you're going to use the main audio from this, from the main uh, video. So since you're not going to use this, instead of lowering the volume, get rid of it completely. So what you do is you select the video, you go all the way to the bottom, and you extract the uh, you extract the audio from that particular clip. So now what that's gonna do is that it's gonna it's not gonna uh, get the memory of your KineMaster full, which is gonna make it work uh, slower. So in this particular case, I'm not gonna tell you to pick one over the other. In my particular case, the one that I'm using uh, right now is KineMaster. That's the app that allows me to do what I do in less time than if I was using PowerDirector. The only reason for that is because PowerDirector has more features and is more complicated for me to use it than KineMaster. That's the only reason. And I'm choosing one over the other. I'm gonna leave that up to you. One of the most important things that I personally take into consideration when I'm making my video is to make sure that whatever tool I'm using is helping me to convey my message better. Like I said at the beginning, What's the point on having the most advanced technology if it doesn't serve your purpose? Remember to take a look at the description box below. I have a ton of useful information to help you grow your channel. And now it's time for you to watch that 57 second short film that I edit and try to guess which app did I use to do it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time on The Water.